From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The countdown to the Brawl of the Wild is on. This game is, you know, everything to them growing up. Washington Grizzlies Stadium will be rocking tomorrow when the Bobcats enter Missoula. It's been so, so amazing to have this chance to represent this school, the city, the state of Montana. And soon enough, fans of one side will get bragging rights for a full year. Well, good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on Friday, November 17th. I'm Jackie Coffin in for Augusta McDonald. Another chapter in Montana's fiercest football rivalry will be written tomorrow. Saturday at noon, the number three UM Grizzlies host the number four MSU Bobcats in the 122nd Brawl of the Wild. Getting a last minute ticket to this game is almost as difficult as getting your hands on a Montana Millionaire ticket. They're going that fast. And if you do find a seat, expect to pay at least $500. As our Haley Monaco reports, many fans of these teams won't sell no matter what you offer. I don't think I would sell them. I don't think I would. 1500 I don't think I would. I, just because it's so much, it's such a fun atmosphere. For 122 years, the Brawl of the Wild game has both divided and united Montana. While many Cats fans can't stand the Grizz and Grizz fans loathe the Cats, each year they all come together in one stadium. It was Cat-Grizz game, everybody wants them, so you can sell your tickets probably triple the value for what they are, double or triple probably. I had two guys last year offer me 600 a ticket. Rick Steinmetz, the custodian at Billings Senior High, has 11 season tickets in his name and a line of people always no. wanting to buy them. Turned him down. That's yeah. right. Rick refuses to sell his Cat Grizz tickets, a principle he's stuck to all 20 years he's been a season ticket holder, no matter the asking price. So it may surprise you, he also refuses to set foot in Washington Grizzly Stadium when the game is in Missoula and he's far from alone. One Cats fan told us they refuse to even get gas in Missoula. And it's not just Cats fans. Visit fan pages like this one and you'll find one comment after another from Grizz fans who refuse to set foot in Bozeman. Citing everything from harassing shouts to stories of rocks thrown at them while attending the Brawl of the Wild. I root for them all year long, I honestly do. But when they face each other, I'm a Bobcat fan. A state divided yet united, because you can bet no matter whether you bleed blue and gold or maroon and silver, most of Montana will be watching come Saturday in one way or another as their teams take the field. Go Cats! In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Well, thank you, Haley. Tickets are in such high demand that for the first time in decades, the opposing team's band won't be at the game. This news was disappointing to the MSU Spirit of the, wi the West marching band, but it's a decision agreed to by both universities. By not reserving seats for band members, both schools will be able to sell an additional 200 to 300 season ticket packages. It's a real disappointment at first to learn that we are not going over for Cat Grizz. Um, so I'm a member of the Kappa Kappa Psi Honorary Band Fraternity on campus, and we have records that date back to the 80s of this tradition of the bands going over for the different Cat Grizz games. Several MSU band members tell us they're still planning to make the trip as fans, leaving their instruments at home to watch the game from the stands. And remember, you can watch the Brawl of the Wild right here on Q2. Coverage starts at 11 a.m. with our Big Sky Showdown pregame show with kickoff between the Grizz and the Cats scheduled for noon. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be there, Miller. You are going to be there. Yes, I've and got tickets. <laughs> you lucky devil. And you're going to have some nice weather this time around, uh, Yes, too. Yeah. you're sending us some nice weather to Missoula Absolutely. for that. Well, let's yep. go ahead and give you a look at that forecast for the big game tomorrow at kickoff. We're looking at partly cloudy skies. Going to stay partly cloudy through the game, starting off at 38 degrees and then just into the 40s during the game. So it should be great weather for hopefully what should be a very competitive game. Great, great weather for football there. All right, let's take a step back in time. Yesterday, our high above average, our overnight low right on target. Was breezy yesterday. We did see some winds uh, early in the morning and then they kind of tapered off during the day. Uh, kind of the case today. Now, maybe not so much here in Billings, still breezy, but very windy this morning along the foothills. Uh, where we could still have gusts over 35 miles an hour, but that should ease up as the day goes on for you as well. So uh, we did get a little bit of rain yesterday, a few flurries, nothing much came of that. Uh, so it's been a very dry start to the month. The year we're still doing really well. Uh, snow totals, we're still digging that hole, but we may see some changes with some snow as we get into Thanksgiving week. 36 right now at the airport, feels like 27. Winds out of the southwest at about 14 miles an hour. So we've got temperatures 31, 
at White Sulphur Springs and some warmer spots. 41 right now in Livingston. We've got 42 in Harlington, right at the freezing mark in Forsyth at 32. We got 28 in Mile City down in Red Lodge. We're at 34, 44 in Cody, and 23 right now in Sheridan. So next couple of days, highs 50s, 60s, and then we see some big changes for Thanksgiving week. We'll tell you the latest thinking coming up here in just a bit. Yeah, I'm curious to think. We've been following it all week, whether there's going to be snow Ugh. on Thanksgiving. Uh, it's been Miller's crazy. feeling a lot of pressure. Yeah, so. but they're, they're starting to come into a little bit of alignment, so we have maybe a better end understanding. Not completely, but let me just say this. Get ready for some type of winter weather next week. Okay. Something okay. warm to wear. Well, yeah. yeah good idea. <laughs> well, nice to see you this good morning, you, Miller. Yeah, we'll check in with you in a minute. Okay. And now to the latest on the conflict in the Middle East. Israeli leaders say they're closer than ever on a possible deal to free some of the 200 plus hostages taken by Hamas in the deadly October 7th attack. CBS's Doug Williams has more this morning from Tel Aviv. First of all, we, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu telling CBS Evening News that hostages taken by Hamas may have previously been held in Gaza's Al Shifa hospital. We had strong indications that they were held in the Shifa hospital, which is one of the reasons we uh, entered the hospital. Israeli Defense Forces say the bodies of two hostages, 65-year-old grandmother Judith Weiss and 19-year-old soldier Noah Marciano, were found near the hospital. This comes as CBS News has learned that Israel is considering a deal that would see Hamas free a number of women and children held hostage in exchange for a three- to five-day ceasefire and the possibility of the release of Palestinian women and children from Israeli prisons. We'll have a temporary ceasefire if we can get our hostages is back. Israel's military entered Al Shifa Hospital this week and yesterday released video showing what they say is tunnel infrastructure and a Hamas vehicle full of weapons in the hospital. Hamas has denied claims that it operates from Gaza's hospitals, and Prime Minister Netanyahu told CBS News he believes Hamas militants fled Al Shifa Hospital as Israeli forces approached. Israel's defense forces also posted images of more weapons said to be found inside the Al-Quds hospital in Gaza. <laughs> Meanwhile, people run through the streets of Jenin to escape the blasts in the West Bank, where, according to reports, Israeli forces killed at least five Palestinians in clashes last night. Doug Williams, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Netanyahu says his military is doing everything it can to keep Palestinian civilians out of harm's way while accusing Hamas of doing the opposite. The Biden administration has backed Israel's assertions that Hamas bases some of its operations in Gazan hospitals, which President Biden has described as a war crime. And the conflict hits ho close to home for former Billing Symphony director Uri Barnea. He moved from Israel to the U.S. with his family back in the 1970s. In the 1990s, his Billings home was vandalized with Nazi symbols during weeks of anti-Semitic activity. That included Jewish headstones being knocked down. It sparked the Not in Our Town movement, where local residents banded together to support their Jewish neighbors. Uri tells us he still has family in Israel. They're doing fine physically, but not mentally and emotionally. One missile actually fell two blocks from my niece in North Tel Aviv, and they had to hide in the staircase. Everybody is completely wrecked. After leaving the Billings Symphony, Barnea became a rabbi in 2007, serving in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. He retired in 2014. And Laurel school leaders are taking steps to address what's been described as a bullying crisis within the district. Last December, we met three parents who had either pulled their children from the school district or were about to, following what they say was a problem going unnoticed. School leaders took it to heart yesterday, bringing in a resilience educator to work with kids at every grade level on kindness. I love to teach them actually what aggression is. It's a game of winning and losing. Typically, someone will say something to try to make you upset, and if you get upset, then you lose, they win. Uh, but if we teach kids, hey, what if you didn't get upset? Laurel's community education coordinator says this is only a first step towards solving the issue. She adds that she hopes parents and families talk to their kids about bullying. And the Montana Department of Corrections is sending a group of inmates to Arizona in an effort to cut down on overcrowding at the state prison. 30 out of an eventual 120 inmates left Deer Lodge this week, transferring to a facility in Eloy, Arizona, run by private prison operator CoreCivic. The state reached an $8 million agreement with the company, 
Leaders say the inmates will have access to comparable services offered at a Montana facility. Some argue the move will also help solve the overcrowding issue at the jail here in Billings. It's really crucial that we figure out a way to deal with this. We may have longer term goals to build additional prison capacity in Montana. We've got to solve this right now. And so acquiring these beds allows us to free up space in the local detention facilities, which will create a much better situation. When we send people out of state, particularly adults, um, we don't have the same control and oversight over what we're doing. It, it comes down to oversight and where the buck stops. And that's that's the problem with this. I mean, these are these are Montanans, you know. Core Civic already works with the state of Montana managing the prison in Shelby. They plan to receive all the 120 inmates by the end of December. Inmates were selected for transfer, transfer based on whether they wanted to volunteer, their custody level, health and mental health needs, and how close they are to parole. Schwann's, the iconic food delivery service, is leaving Montana. The company is reducing the number of states it serves to just 18, closing 90 delivery sites, including the one in Lockwood. Schwann's rebranded as Yellow last year and will now focus operations on the East Coast, with most facility closures coming in the western United States. And it's about to be a whole lot easier to get to Los Angeles from Billings. Allegiant will begin offering a non-stop flight from Billings to LAX starting May 16th. The flights will take off on Thursdays and Sundays. Round-trip flights are currently going for as little as $118.